talk about Nathan Robinson for ending? Oh no, what's going on? Nathan Robinson, everyone's favorite. What would you call him? A dandy? Because he because he dresses, you know, like because uh, he dresses the way he dresses. I'm grieved to tell you that Nathan J. Robinson has effectively fired me and most of the current affairs staff because we were trying to organize to a workers' co-op. This isn't a bit. I wish it was. This is going big. Yikes. When did this come out? Three and a half hours ago. Whew. Now that's what I call one spicy meatball. Let's take a look. More drama. Let's go. Isn't that illegal to try to fire people for forming a union? Well, they're trying to form a co-op, so I don't know if it's the same. Let's see. <clears throat> All right. Let's AC back on. We're feeling. Yeah, here we go. There we go. We, the former full and part-time staff, write to you with deep sadness and disappointment about the recent events that have occurred at Current Affairs. That's the magazine Nathan J. Robinson uh, heads. On August 8th, Nathan Robinson uh, unilaterally fired most of the workforce to avoid an organizational restructuring that would limit his personal power. Yeah, we were fired by the editor-in-chief of a socialist magazine for trying to start a worker co-op. We all joined the current affairs at different times. The business manager was even hired with the explicit instruction to help shepherd the magazine through the process of creating a more democratic workplace, in alignment with our socialist values. The organizational restructuring has been a topic for most of 2020 and 2021. We discussed it informally, we tried to piecemeal reforms, we, try we did a full organization survey and one-on-one -on -one interviews with editors and staff to try to find consensus on a collective vision. Everyone's stated goal, including Nathan's, was to create a democratic workplace in which all voices were equally valued. Now, I want to come out right out the gate, okay? And I want to say something. There are many, many types of worker cooperatives. One in which all voices are valued equally is not the most common one. Uh, and it's also considered a relatively severe one. So, this is... An interesting and pretty uh, pretty significant jump right off the bat. But if Nathan Robinson was facilitating this discussion, then he opened himself up to it. But when we finally got around to discussing organizational models during a Zoom meeting on August 7th, Nathan became agitated. He insisted in our attempt to uh, set shared internal values, we were disregarding his vision for current affairs as published in the first issue. There was a palpable shift in his demeanor, and he behaved in a hostile manner throughout the rest of the conversation. The next morning, he started removing people from the company's Slack, and said, Guys, by the way, what is Slack? I've seen people say this term in reference to businesses. I don't know what Slack is. What is that? It's like professional Discord? Boomer Discord? Okay, gotcha. Um and sent letters requesting resignations, eliminating positions, and in some cases offering new honorary titles, which would have no say in governance. In individual letters, Nathan claimed he had irreparably lost faith in our ability to work together. But less than 24 hours later, he sent follow-up emails retracting his statements and admitting that he simply did not want current affairs to be a democratic workplace. Man, did he just admit that? Is that... He believes in his guts, the magazine and media venture we have collectively created is purely his. He wrote, This organization has been heading slowly for some, quarter, some sort of reckoning where it was going to have to be made clear once and for all what kind of authority I wanted to have over it. And I was in denial about the fact that the answer is, I think I should be on top of the org chart with everyone else selected by me and reporting to me. Oh, hmm, that's pretty direct. I let current affairs build up into a sort of egalitarian community of friends while knowing in my heart that I still thought of it as my project over which I should hold control. Huh. That is a surprisingly direct and forthcoming uh, admission of intent there, you know, um, uh, uh, assuming, of course, that this isn't literally made up, but I would, I'd, I'd be, I'd be surprised if it was, you know, um, <laughs> well, we note darkly that he says egalitarian community of friends and not, of course, a workplace. Yeah, that is um, that is a, a, a cringe move right here. You know when businesses will say, we're not a company, we're a family? 
that kind of behavior is sometimes used to legitimize bad work conditions and get uh, workers to be more placid and accepting of, you know, because they're not being exploited. They're just, you know, friends looking out for friends. Nathan's overtures, since the purge have been to reach out to repair friendships or hastily offer new ad hoc work, but he is fundamentally missing the point that he has effectively fired us for organizing for better working conditions. Eh? We are sad, aghast, betrayed, and of course angry to realize that this person we trusted has been lying to us for years. We, a small staff composed entirely of women and non-binary people, have faithfully worked to make Current Affairs the beautiful, engaging leftist magazine and podcast that it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. God. We have commissioned articles and illustrations, planned and produced the podcast, organized contracts and ensured swift payment for contributors, edited the vast majority of articles, conceived the amusements, created the social media and marketing strategies, and done most of the work running Current Affairs. Nathan J. Robinson can write articles and give speeches, but when it comes to running an org, he simply isn't up to the task, as he wrote in one of his emails on August 8th, quote, I think you saw yesterday that ultimately I just felt current affairs is slipping slowly away from me, and I took an insane course of action to do what I thought would get it back. I am not good at running an org. I freely admit this, end quote. <clears throat> we have no better explanation for Nathan's behavior than any of you, but it is clear to us now that this is simply the most extreme event in a pattern of controlling and dishonest actions that began long before the sequence of events and has created an untenable situation for the workers. Well, since we're doing drama review again, I guess I should be forthcoming and give my impressions of this. So, a few things. First of all, um, while the proposed co-op model that was discussed here is very, is very substantial, uh, that seems to be what they were collectively gunning for, and Nathan Robinson's alleged firing of all of them for even trying to push for it is completely inexcusable. 100%, there's no getting around it uh, at all. Like, just, just not, yeah, no. Absolutely not. Um, I am, of course, interested in Nathan Robinson's response to this, but the formatting of this email and the claims made uh, suggests to me that this is a fairly legitimate uh, set of grievances. This does not feel to me like some spurious or hyperbolic set of accusations. You know what I mean? Uh, seems altogether like a... I'm terribly sorry. Somebody showing me. Uh, apparently the... Um, the Destiny fans are saying that uh, I retracted my positions from the previous stream, and this morning, my drama coverage of the uh, Prime Kai thing was me sucking up to uh, Dylan Burns. I'm not sure if they've actually watched any of it. It's just very reflexive. Uh, how? I don't... I have about as much faith in, in uh, Destiny fans as Door fans these days. Um, in terms of my general perception of their reasonability. For a week, Nathan insisted to the board of directors that he would be able to continue running current affairs profitably, assisted by a... Wait, board of direct... Who's the board of directors? Who have they been acquired by? Does anyone know uh, the publishing company for current affairs? Hold on. Current affairs magazine. Uh, your founded company, Current Affairs LLC. Country based in website ISSN. Circulation founder. Uh, I don't see. I don't. I don't see who owns it. It could be investors. Yeah, I guess, but no, nothing large enough to be listed. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was just curious. I didn't know if they were controlled by some larger. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. Assisted by a new staff and a promise to write harder than ever before, since then he's done an about-face, expressing regret and concern that he has created a situation where current affairs cannot continue to exist. As Nathan admits, he cannot do the job himself, and the workers he purged are unable to pick up the pieces he so carelessly shattered. The staff was fired without warning. The board has attempted to find a suitable severance, but all of current affairs' assets are reserved to fulfill the obligations to our subscribers and creditors. The compromise position reached last night is that current affairs will take a one-month hiatus, and that all staff, including Nathan and the workers he fired, will be paid through September. We are frankly devastated to lose our high esteem for current affairs. The left can be as lonely and vicious as anywhere else on this earth. Fucking true. And we love to not just contribute, but shape a place of amity, camaraderie, joy, beauty, and truth. We've been able to make people laugh and think, and most importantly, feel less lonely. 
We've also truly loved working with such talented, curious, and generous artists and writers. We know that this news will devastate people who may be reeling from losses of faith, old or new. This feels like a light going out. Goodness. In solidarity, a business manager, managing and amusements editor, admin assistant, former producer, and poet at large, formerly administrative maven. Well, I don't know what a what an administrative maven is. Uh, I'll admit, but apart from that, this all looks uh, pretty bad. This all looks uh, pretty bad. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. I just love that this is the scary hypothetical Ben Shapiro comes up with to illustrate why teachers' unions are bad. Imagine, for example, you could elect your own boss and negotiate with him your salary, and then you just get to spend whatever money is in the kitty because he doesn't own that money. Imagine if you controlled your workplace and could decide how the money was spent and your boss was an elected leader rather than a feudal tyrant. What horror. <laughs> yeah. That's only a month and a half old. Has he given any broad response? No, he hasn't tweeted in a while. Yeah. Ooh. Well, that's pretty bad. Jeez, what do I... What do I even say about this? Uh... I don't think every business needs to be made a flat worker cooperative. Those are sometimes not the most effective way of managing a business. In fact, oftentimes they're not. That is a difficult thing to manage. I do want some level of mandated workplace democracy. It seems like Nathan Robinson had principles that he was quick to abandon when he realized in a panic it would mean losing control over his pet project. That's pretty disappointing. I mean, jeez, especially assuming the contents of that big letter are correct, the panic behind it, like, he, they've been discussing this for over a year, and then he freaks out over it and just panic fires everyone, you know? Especially since, and I want to be clear about this, and this is, by the way, this is such a stupid fucking premise, everyone gets behind this all the time, okay? If you own a company, if you start a company and you own it and other people come on board and they work with you and they contribute to the project, it's not your pet project anymore. It's just not. It's everyone's, you know? Maybe to different extents, but if you've been working on a project for a year or two or five, even if you don't own it, it's still your, I mean, you're working on it. You're doing it. It's a group project. You can talk you can talk about the extent to which that might transfer to ownership, but certainly if you're a socialist, you should believe it at least somewhat entitles you to some degree of ownership or democratic control, and this reaction from Nathan Robinson is just deeply, deeply disappointing. I'm going to regret this when my editors rise up against me sometime in the future. You know? Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Will Riot and Tempest hold all my fucking passwords hostage or something? Hey, hey. Uh, you know, they're, they're coming after me. No, uh, I'd like to think they have a lot of workplace control. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really know what to say about this, in large part because it seems so obviously bad and hypocritical that there isn't much nuance for me to dig into. I mean, geez, Nathan. That's just really bad. I mean, at the very least... No, nothing, nothing. It's such terrible optics for the left. Lamau, it's so classic. Shoo! And everyone, remember this, okay? The problems with capital are structural, not individual. Okay? This is the whole point. Even if you have really good business owners, like Nathan Robinson, who are socialists or whatever, they're still beholden to the material incentives of capital owners. That's how all of this works. You can put the nicest people on top and the system will continue as it has because the problem isn't with the quality of the business owners. The problem is with the fact that there are business owners. You can put... Uh, guys, I'm not immune to this, okay? You could make me a leader of a business, some highly, you know, 
productive, streamlined industry. And you know what? I would I would probably chafe at other people coming from me either. People always try to protect their own interests. That's why you have to build a system that incentivizes everyone uh, to preserve the collective interest. That is how that works. So while this is disappointing, I can't altogether say it's surprising. Not with regards to Nathan specifically, but with regards to... This is the Moss thing that you talked about, right? It is the Moss thing that I talked about. Please let that be a consistent analogy that we use. If we could, if there's anything that we could take from that segment, if we could use Moss as a sort of allegory for the uncaring, unchanging, and autonomous nature of capital acquisition, that would be phenomenal. Because I think it's a really, really, really great analogy. Isn't it hard to talk about monarchy without talking about the king? Yeah, you can agitate through criticisms of the people in charge now, but never delude yourself into believing that it is the people in charge themselves who are the problem. If you have a problem with your king, you're probably going to have a problem with the next one too. Your real problem is with monarchy. That doesn't mean you can't impugn the king as they exist now. It just means that you have to remember that first and foremost, your critique is structural. 